Okay, lesson 89. Now, you'll notice we're getting kind of close to the end. We, when we start doing double lessons, we get through a, a set of tests here pretty quick. Lesson 89, we're talking about vector decomposition. Uh, we've talked about vectors already up to this point. We've talked about adding vectors. If you remember like that parallelogram method or the heads to tails method, right, of adding vectors. All right, so this is about the third lesson that we've covered that has dealt with vectors. Uh, today we're talking about decomposing a vector. Okay, now our vector, I don't know, all I can think of now is uh, that movie Airplane with uh, what's your... What's your vector, Victor? Nobody remembers. Okay. All right. So this line right here is actually our vector. Okay. When we decompose it, we're decomposing it into our blue, uh, into our horizontal and our vertical lines that are going to give us that. So decomposing a vector means to separate into two vectors, which when added result in the original vector. It, whenever I add the blue, when I add the red, I get the green. Uh, when a vector is decomposed, it's split into a horizontal vector and a vertical vector. In the diagram, what we see is Vy is decomposed into vertical and Vx uh, into that horizontal. Okay, and we should see, um, should be horizontal Vx there. Notice that the vector makes a right triangle, which is going to be helpful, uh, with its vertical and horizontal components. Since it makes a right triangle, Trig ratios can be used to find the magnitude of the vertical and horizontal components. Okay, in the end, what does magnitude really mean? Distance. All right, so we're solving for distance. All right, well, we're going to scroll down here a little bit. Okay, so we can read off the rest of this. Uh, let's see. Uh, the angle of a vector is always given counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So we'll run into that later as we look at some questions. Um, vectors can also be added by decomposition to add two vectors, decompose them, and add their vertical and horizontal components. This will give the resultant vector in component form. Somebody give me um, a, a two single digit numbers. Somebody give me a single digit number. One. Okay. We got one. What else? Six. All right. So let's say we had a vector that looked like that. That means that it went to the right one it went up six, right? That's how we would draw that line or that ray, correct? Okay, if I wanted to decompose that, right, I'm seeing something that is going essentially like this. Decomposing it means that first I'm going to look at its horizontal component, right, the X component, which means that means it's going to the left one up zero, okay? So what I'm seeing is that this right here is representing one zero you with me so far okay now I'd want to get the vertical okay so I want to go from here straight up is it going to go is a vertical line going left or right at all no, no. so it's going to be zero and then what six up all right so decomposing a vector means that I'm splitting it into its x zero and its zero y Okay, so it's actually really, really easy. Okay, it's really not that hard. Uh, let's see, I think that's it for that. So we'll get into some questions here on lesson 89. Okay, now that we kind of looked at that last bit, if we want to decompose the vector 3, negative 2, and I want the V of X, what am I leaving off? I'm leaving off the Y value and substituting in what for it? Zero. So the x should be what? Should be 3 what? 3, 0. And let me... Yeah, there. I was like, why is none of these matching up? So we should be there. And then for our horizontal, or sorry, our vertical component, we should get 0, negative 2. Does that make sense? Not even a whole lot of math to actually be done there. Okay. Now, I don't know if I had this conversation. Did I have this conversation with you, with you guys and talking about how you guys watch the lessons, right? Did any of you ever go back and watch some of these? Yeah, handful of you. Okay, how many of you go back and watch the video with no sound? You guys all put headphones in? Great. 
because what you'll what you'll notice is that there's a lot of times where there's a lot of stuff that's being talked about and discussed and instruction that's being given that isn't necessarily written so that you can see it right so it's really really important that you listen to the video or at the very least find a way to put on subtitles but I'm guessing that those subtitles aren't always accurate okay all right number two decompose the vector uh, X with an angle of 46 degrees uh, and a magnitude of 9 uh, around your answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay? So a little bit more involved here. This isn't as easy as just splitting that guy up. Oh, let's see. i got to find out what I did. Here we go. All right. So this, if you remember in our notes, they said we can use trig functions, correct? All right. So if I want to find this guy right here, all right, let's look at our angle. Let's look at what we have and what we need, all right? What is y in relation to that 46? It's opposite, okay? So that's what I need. What do I have? I've got the hypotenuse, okay? So if I want to find out what y is, which trig function do I want to use? What uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sign. Okay, so I'm going to write sine. Okay, what goes right after the sine? What goes after my trig function? 46, my degree. Okay, so sine 46 equals what? Mm, I, not the answer just yet. Okay, but equals what over here? Y over 9, right? So what did you plug in your calculator, Aaron, to get that answer? Oh, you just hit sine 46. What do we need to do to solve for y here? Multiply by 9, right? Multiply by 9. So I want to type in 9 sine 46 to get my y value. 6.47. All right, what is that going to look like here? 0, 6.47. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so we're going to get that for our y component. Now let's uh, let's do our x. Okay, here. All right, am I going to use sine to find x? No. What am I going to? I'm going to use cosine. Okay, so we're going to do cosine what? 46 equals what? I'm going to use y. X over nine. Then what? Multiply by 9. So I'm going to do 9 cosine 46. 6.25. What does that look like in decomposed vector form? 6.250. All right. So my V of X is 6.250, and my V of Y is 0, 6.47. Does that match anything that you see up there? C. Okay. All right. Do we understand how to use our trig functions there? Okay. Great. All right. Now they're going to give us a word problem. We got a helicopter traveling at a speed. Oh gosh. It's not going to operate. All right. Traveling at a speed of 124 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's ascending. Does anybody know what the term ascending means? It's going up, right? It's going straight up. Um, traveling at a speed of 124 kilometers per hour, ascending at an angle of 36 degrees, so it's rising at 36 degrees. What are the vertical and horizontal speeds of the helicopter? Meaning, at what speed is it moving across the ground, and at what speed is it uh, ascending? Okay, going straight up. Okay. We're going to solve this question exactly the same way that we solved the other question, okay? So as I look at this, what I can really do is I can separate this, and I can solve for y speed, and I can solve for x speed, okay? So horizontal speed is going to be my x. Which, which trig function did we use there? Cosine, all right? So we should kind of get used to this, actually, right? So we're doing cosine what? 36, right, equals x over 124. What am I going to end up doing? 
multiply by 124. So I'm going to type in my calculator if we've got this right, 124 cosine 36. 100.31 100.32, okay, and we are in KPH, which none of us knows anything about, but I think that's about like 61 miles per hour, okay? All right, now let's look at Y. Now, the nice thing about this is that I can tell you that we're going to use 124 sine 36, right? You get doing this enough, you're like, okay, I don't, I know we're going to get y over 124, right? y over 124, and then I'm going to multiply by 124 on the other side, so long as y comes out on top. All right, what's 124 sine 36? 72.89 kph. Okay? So that is our vertical speed. So vert, we'll do v in horizontal. Okay? What is our answer here? A. Right? A. All right, great. Four. Four is a big one. Four gives us eight parts. Okay? Vector P has a magnitude of nine. Magnitude means, essentially, in my right triangle shown, magnitude is the hypotenuse. Right? Okay, because the vector is the hypotenuse. Okay, so vector P has a magnitude of 9, meaning the hypotenuse is 9. It makes a 23-degree angle with, a hor with the horizontal. Vector Q has a magnitude of 4 and makes a 58-degree angle with the horizontal. So we would end up drawing two diagrams. We're going to take this. I'm going to scroll kind of up here so I can make some space. All right. Let's call this vector P. Okay. Magnitude of 9. Okay. Let's see. We'll come over here. Vector Q. Magnitude of 4. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we know? We know... What's this angle right here? 23. Okay. What's this angle here? 51 or 58? 58. 58. Sorry about that. All right, draw two diagrams representing the decomposition of P and Q. Okay, uh, label your diagrams with the above given information. We pretty well have done that. Okay, and if we wanted to do anything else, we could probably, you know, give something like that. But that's, that's that. Draw two diagrams representing the decomposition. We label the diagrams with the given information. All right, the next B says decompose P around your answers to the nearest hundred when necessary. Okay, so on B, uh, we want our X and our Y. Okay. All right. We want this in here too. So this is V of Y, V of X, V of Y, V of X. Okay. All right, V of X on vector P. How are we going to find that? 9 cosine 23. Yeah, what is uh, 9 cosine 23 equal? 8.28. Okay, how am I going to find vector uh, Y of vector P? 9, co or nine sine 23. 3.52. Very good. Okay. All right, let's come over here. We'll get our V of X and our V of Y. Somebody, actually, somebody else, yes. Uh, let's see, Mick, how would you find V of X for this one here? Uh, 4 cosine 58. 4 cosine 58. What does that come out to? Two point one two, okay. Uh, Darian, how would you find uh, the y, your vertical on vector q? Uh,
What do you mean, what was the one before? Well, it shouldn't depend upon what he said. If you're using it, if he said cosine, now I'm going to say sine, then you really don't know how to solve it, right? Okay, so we're using V of Y, right? All right, so this is opposite, right? We've got hypotenuse, so we're going to use... We use its opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so we need to kind of go back, not just for your benefit, but probably for everybody's. All right, so ha uh, toa. All right, what does O stand for? What does H stand for? What does A stand for? Adjacent. Okay. What does S stand for? C. Cosine and T. Tangent. Okay, so if we've got that down, right, we know we're solving for this guy. I've got opposite and hypotenuse. Which one uses O and H? Sine. Okay, so we know we're going to use sine. So how am I going to use sine to solve for my vertical component? Okay, let's start at the beginning. Let's, you know we're using sine. What comes after sine? 58. And that equals opposite over hypotenuse. What's my opposite in here? No. Y over what? Over 4. Now if I want to solve for Y, what am I going to do with 4? Multiply it to the other side. So I'm going to use in my calculator, I'm going to use 4 sine 58, right? Okay. 3.3, um, yeah, 3.39. Okay, so we decomposed our vectors. We gave our answer to the nearest hundredth when necessary. Uh, let's see, uh, and that is both B and C, right? We did B over here, we did C over here. Let's look at D. It says add the vectors by composition, find the magnitude, uh, the results that vector makes with the horizontal. All right, so let's do that. What we're going to do is we're going to add our x's, and we're going to add our y's, okay? Um, so we're going to take 8.28 plus 2.12. What does that come out to? 10.4. Okay, so let's say we got 10.4, okay? Um, let's see, and we want 3.52 plus 3.39. 6.91, okay? All right, so when we add those vectors together, I'm getting 10.4 for my x, my horizontal, and I'm getting 6.91 for my vertical. If I want to find out what the resultant vector is, right, basically what I have is I have my a and my b, and I'm looking for c, right? So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to take 10.4 squared plus 6.91 squared. We're going to square root that answer, and that's going to get us our c or our, um, our magnitude of the resultant for d. Okay? Okay, so you said 108.17 plus 47.7, so you're adding those things together, and then you're going to square root that answer. 12.48, does it, does that 8 round up? So you just got straight up 12.48? What's after that four? Okay. So you got 12.48. They got 12.49. I don't know what the difference would be. Did anybody get 12.49? 12.49. So maybe you just, you might have estimated, you might have rounded off. Okay, so on D, we should get 12.49 is the magnitude of the resultant vector. In C, it says find the angle the resultant vector makes with the horizontal. Round your answer to the nearest degree. Okay, so... Um, so this is our magnitude, right? We know our horizontal, 
we know our vertical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some erasing up here of Q. I want to make some space because we want to find an angle now. Okay? Because what we have, are we almost out of time? I got 10 minutes. Okay? Uh, we've got 12.49 there. Okay, we've got 10.4 here, and we've got 6.91 there. Okay, we want to know what this angle is. Okay, what can I use? What do I use to find angles? We use trig functions to find side, uh, side lengths, right? What can I use to find an angle measure? How about an inverse sign? An inverse trig function. All right? Okay. Um, what trig function do you want to use? I have all three sides. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Pick one. Sine. Okay, so we're going to use inverse sine. Okay. Sine means opposite over hypotenuse, right? What's opposite of the angle that I'm looking for? 6.91. Okay, and what's hypotenuse? 0.49. So what I'm going to plug in my calculator is I'm going to hit second sine, and it'll already set up a parentheses. You're going to put 6.91 divided by 12.49, close up the parentheses, and hit enter. What, okay, to the nearest whole degree, be 30 what? 34 degrees. Okay, you solve for every part of that. Okay, good job. Right. If we can solve question number four, there's probably not a question in here that we're not going to be able to do. Okay? All right, let's keep moving now. Okay. Um, on five, it says decompose vector five, eight. So we're going to put it into two vectors. I'm going to get two things. All right, what should I get? Five, zero, and zero, eight. Okay, everybody understands that. Okay, five, zero, and zero, eight. All right, six. Uh, vector V makes a 30 degree angle with the horizontal, has a magnitude of four, decompose the vector round uh, to the nearest hundred. So what they're looking for again is they're looking for that X and that Y. Okay. We know we have a magnitude of 4. We know we've got a degree of 33. Okay, we've got y. We've got x. Do you guys know now kind of how to solve for x and y? How do I solve? Which trig function do I use for y? Sine. So what am I plugging in my calculator? 4 sine 33. What do you get? Uh, 2.18. So we'd have 0, 2.18. Correct? All right. Which means I should get zero over here. What am I going to do for the x? For cosine 33. What do you get? 3.35. We feeling pretty good about being able to do some of these now? Okay. All right. So that's what this is uh, v of y. This is v of x. We're good to go on that. Okay. All right, number seven, last question. The pull for a tent makes a 59 degree angle with the ground. Uh, if the load of the pull is 15 pounds, what are the vertical and horizontal loads? Uh, round your answer to the nearest hundred. Kind of flip back through here. Okay. So here's my pull. You know, imagine it kind of like a tent pull. Okay. The load of the pole is 15 pounds. Okay, we can use this to solve speeds, weights, those types of things. All right, we've got a 59 degree angle with the ground. Okay, so we're not just talking about distances. We can use this to solve, you know, how much force is being applied horizontally, how much of force is being applied vertically. All right, so we're going to solve this the same way we solved six and several of these others. What's the horizontal pound? So you did, you did sign. 
So you weren't finding the horizontal, you found the vertical pound, right? 12.86 pounds. Okay, six point or 12.86 pounds of force pulling on it vertically. What about pulling on it horizontally? 7.73. Okay, does anybody need to know how they found 7.73 and how they found 12.86? Found 12.86 by doing 15 sine 59. You find 7.73 by doing 15 cosine 59. Okay. Once you kind of see the pattern in it, right, you don't have to set up the ratio and then multiply by the denominator again and again and again, right? You see that pattern, it goes really pretty quickly, okay? All right, we feel pretty good about this? All right, great.